Can you tell me what is the Islamic perspective on zina and what is the prescribed punishment in Islam for doing that sin? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Rasulillah. Wa ala ali wa sahabi ajmeen. Amma abad. Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Rabbi shali sadri. Wa salli amri. Wa ahlul ugdatan bil lisani yafqahu qawli. Zina means illegal sexual intercourse or when a man and woman who are not married if they have a sexual intercourse it's called as zina it means sexual intercourse outside the marriage bond and the islamic sharia its basic aim is to preserve the honor and lineage that is the reason zina that is illegal sexual intercourse it is a major sin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran in surah isra chapter number 17 verse number 32 come not close to zina come not close to unlawful sexual intercourse for it is a shameful deed an evil opening other roads to evil islam has tried its best to protect the honor of the man and the woman and there are various guidelines given in the sharia and the quran and hadith which prevents a person from coming close to zina number 1 is hijab has been prescribed and besides hijab for the woman hijab for the man also for the woman her complete body should be covered the only part that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist some scholars say that even this should be covered and allah says about the hijab allah has prescribed the hijab for the man first in the quran and then for the woman allah says in the quran in surah nur chapter number 24 was the mutatti say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty moment a man looks at a woman if any reason thought any unashim thought comes in his mind he should lower his gaze the next verse speaks about the hijab for the woman it says in surah nur chapter number 24 verse number 31 say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not her beauty except what appears ordinary of and draw her veil over the bosom and the verse continues so basically lowering the gaze is very important which prevents zina to a great extent and the punishment for this unlawful sexual intercourse zina there are two types of punishments depending upon the type of zina zina can be of two types number 1 is that unlawful sexual intercourse done by an unmarried man and woman it's called as fornication in english and if unlawful sexual intercourse is done by a married man or woman it is called as adultery the punishment for both it differs allah says in the quran in surah nur chapter number 24 verse number 2 as for the woman and man who commit fornication as for the fornicator be it a woman or a man flog each with 100 stripes is give them 100 lashes and let not your heart be moved towards them and let a group of believers witness the punishment that means if any man or woman who is not married if they have unlawful sexual intercourse the punishment is 100 lashes flogging them with 100 lashes and as far as punishment for adultery is concerned unlawful sexual intercourse done by a married man or woman it's mentioned in sahih bukhari volume number 8 in the book of hudud hadith number 6814 a man approaches prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and says that i have committed adultery and the man he bears witness four times that he has committed adultery and the prophet he ordered that he should be punished he should be stoned to death because he was a married man so the punishment for adultery unlawful sexual intercourse done by a married man in islam it is stoned to death It's also mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Hudud, hadith number 6815 and 6816, that there was a man who approached the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and told him that he had committed unlawful sexual intercourse. He had committed zina. So the Prophet turned away from him. Again, the man approached the Prophet and bore witness four times that he had committed unlawful sexual intercourse. He had committed zina. So the Prophet asked him that, "Are you mad?" He said, "No." prophet asked him are you married he said yes 
So the prophet ordered that he should be stoned to death. This again proves that for adultery, zina, unlawful sexual intercourse done by mad man or woman, the punishment is stoned to death. It's further mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Hudud, hadith number 6819. There was a Jew and a Jewess who were caught committing adultery and they were brought to the Prophet. The Prophet asked them that in your religion, what is the punishment for adultery? So they said that our priest had innovated that the faces should be blackened with charcoal. The Prophet said, get your scripture and show it to me. The man gets the scripture and he covers something and then he reads it. So one of the Sahaba says, please remove your hand. And the moment the hand was removed, it was mentioned down there that Rajam, stoning to death, should be given to a person who commits adultery. So even in the Jewish scripture, even in the Christian scripture, the punishment for adultery is stoning to death. And the Prophet commanded that both of them, the Jew and the Jewess, both should be stoned to death. It's mentioned in Sahib Muslim, volume number three, in the book of Hudud, hadith number 4191, that the Prophet said that anyone who commits zina, if an unmarried man or woman commits zina, that is due fornication, the punishment is giving 100 lashes and they should be banished for one year. And the Prophet continues and says that anyone who does zina, who is married, anyone who does unlawful sexual intercourse, does adultery, if a person is married, man or woman, then the punishment is giving them 100 stripes, lashing them 100 times, and then thrown into death. So this is the different type of punishment for zina, and it is one of the major sin in Islam. And in Al-Qabair, Imam Adhabi, he gives number 10 to the sin zina, adultery and fornication.